we have built our bookstore application by following microservices architecture and all the things are working together just fine but in order to run the application in production environment we need to take more things into consideration for example if some things are going wrong how quickly the dev team or the support team get notified how quickly they can uh, take a look at it and then figure out what is going wrong and how quickly they can fix the issue so these are the very important things in order to run the application in production because your customers will be uh, using your system and if things are going wrong frequently or you are not able to understand uh, what is going wrong it will be a nightmare to support this system so we are going to take a look at what are the things that we uh, need to look into it uh, in order to make the system more uh, observable and maintainable spring boot provides a lot of capabilities uh, to support this observability for example when we talk about observability uh, some of the primary things that we need to look into is uh, how do we log our application flows and how do we uh, capture the metrics and how do we uh, capture the traces uh, so all this information we need to capture and then be able to observe the system uh, how it is functioning or is there any abnormal behaviors and all these things we should be able to observe it so in this video we are going to use various uh, technologies like uh, uh, grafana prometheus loki and tempo to capture all this observable data and then see how we can uh, monitor our application in a easier uh, to manage way okay let's get started spring boot already provides various monitoring capabilities via its actuator so spring boot actuator uh, provides various api endpoints that you can use to uh, observe what your application is consists of like uh, you can see what are all the beans that are already uh, configured in your application you can see what are all the loggers that are currently uh, initialized for your application and there are a lot of uh, actuator api endpoints that you can uh, use to know more about the application that is currently running so uh, behind the scenes spring boot actuator uses a library called micrometer this micrometer you can think of it as a uh, facade for various backend systems like uh, slfrj for loggers so once you capture uh, various metrics from your application you can use actuator and then you can plug it to various backend systems if you go to this metric section here you can see once you capture the metrics you can publish those metrics to various backend uh, systems here like one of the most popular one is prometheus and there are others like influxdb or elasticsearch so you can use various um, backend systems to publish them the good thing is as we are using micrometer which is like a facet it doesn't tightly coupled with the backend system that you are using so you can use it in a, a backend neutral way to capture the matrix and then you can publish it to various uh, data stores that can store this matrix information so let us go ahead and quickly take a look at how uh, actuator uh, features looks like uh, let us take a look at our catalog service and try to uh, take a glance what kinds of uh, information management information actuator can provide so right now i am taking a look at catalog service of palm.xml here we have this actuator uh, starter added and also we have added this micrometer registry prometheus so with these dependencies added now let me start the catalog service by running this um, so i do not have a database and all running but just to start the catalog service i am using this test containers based uh, local development setup and i am running this test catalog service application which is going to start the catalog db which is postgres and then starts the application so here the application is started now if i go to localhost 8081 this is the port catalog service is running and if i access slash actuator you can see there are a number of api endpoints available for uh, accessing various pieces of information about the application catalog service so how we are getting all this uh, information so once we add this uh, actuator dependency 
and if you notice we have configured to expose all the uh, actuator endpoint here we mentioned management endpoints by exposure include equals to star star means we are exposing all the uh, api endpoints but by default only health and info uh, are enabled i guess but if you want to enable only specific things you can name them or you can specify star which expose all of things like this so here you can take a look at okay if you want to know what are all the beans that are registered in your spring boot application you can go to this beans api uh, actuator beans api endpoint and this shows all the beans that you explicitly registered and also all the beans that are auto configured by spring boot itself so you can get to know all the information what type of a bean scope it is what is the class name what are its dependencies so you can uh, get to know all the beans that are registered in our application by looking at this api endpoint result similarly there are other uh, various api endpoints like uh, health so if you go to health it will show whether system everything is up or not but you can uh, configure it to show what are all the components that are healthy or not like uh, in our catalog service we are using database also we can configure it to show more details about whether the database is uh, working fine or not for our uh, order service we are also using uh, rabbitmq so it will also check the connectivity between rabbitmq and our application so you can configure all the details to show up whether our system is uh, running healthy or not so like that there are a lot of uh, data that you can uh, capture by looking into various these api actuator endpoints so one thing that is more interesting for us right now is this metrics so here if you go to actuator metrics endpoint you can see there are a lot of metric names and if you want to get to know more uh, information about any of this you can go to any of this specific metric slash metric name and you can go to know uh, more data about this one okay so this is how we can get the metrics of uh, many different aspects again in our uh, catalog service palm.xml we have already added this micrometer registry prometheus which will uh, give us one more api endpoint here prometheus so if you go to prometheus actuator endpoint you can see the metrics information in a prometheus format okay this is the format that prometheus expects like it is a uh, metric name and you will have a uh, set of labels associated as uh, dimensions okay so this is how we can expose the data that can be consumed by a prometheus agent okay in the deployment docker compose directory i have created a new file called monitoring.ml file so in this file i have declared this prometheus um, service here and by default it is going to run on 9090 port i mapped it to the same port on the host as well and we need to pass a configuration parameters to this uh, prometheus so that it will start monitoring all those uh, services so here in the prometheus directory i have a prometheus.ml which is the configuration for prometheus and here we define uh, what are all the services that we want to monitor and where to uh, scrape the metrics and all that we define in this file so here in this file we have some global configuration right now we have configured only scrape interval by default the global uh, setting is for 15 seconds for every so the default is uh, one minute but we have customized it to uh, 15 seconds and uh, we have set up various jobs here for under scrape configs and each job is going to uh, define what system we want to monitor and where is the target and what is the api endpoint that we want to call to get this metrics information so here the first one is the prometheus itself so this is going to uh, scrape the metrics of prometheus server itself and the second one is we are defining uh, catalog service and we are specifying what is the uh, target here so this is where the server is running catalog service because we are going to run both catalog service and prometheus in the same uh, docker network we are referencing this host name as catalog hyphen service and it is running on port 80881 on this host 
we are going to call this api endpoint slash actuator slash prometheus to get the prometheus matrix okay and scrape interval is specified as five seconds so for every five seconds it's going to make a call to catalog hyphen service colon 8081 slash actuator slash prometheus api endpoint which is going to return the uh, matrix information in prometheus uh, format okay so similarly we have defined uh, jobs for all other services as well like uh, we have order service we have notification service we have api gateway and finally we have bookstore web app and we configured a uh, different uh, host names and then uh, the port numbers they are running on and all of them have same actuator endpoint and earlier we have added only actuator so i have added uh, both actuator and micrometer registry prometheus uh, dependency in all of our services so for api gateway bookstore web app catalog auto service notification service so for all of them i have added both uh, actuator with micrometer registry prometheus so that i can uh, have this api endpoint from which i can scrape the matrix okay so all of these services now expose this api endpoint fine so in addition to this, um, I have also added a set of uh, new targets here in task file. So I have added start monitoring and then the command is docker compose. This uh, I have added this file name here monitoring.ml under our docker our directory and it is going to do the same thing like a restart infra like that. So we are going to start the all the containers that are defined in monitoring.ml file here right now we have only prometheus but going forward we are going to add more and we have stop monitoring and then restart monitoring this is uh, you are familiar with so what i did first i called restart monitoring um, and then it started prometheus uh, server with this configuration and one thing to note here is we are volume mounting our local uh, file prometheus slash prometheus.ml file into within the container we are mapping to this path etc prometheus prometheus.ml and we are starting the prometheus server by specifying the config file path as this one so essentially it is going to use our prometheus.ml file as the config file and start this prometheus server okay so now it is uh, once i started this prometheus server i have also started all of our services by simply running task restart okay now all the services are running in our docker in internet you can see all the services infra services and then finally prometheus as well and now prometheus is running on port 9090 now if i go to localhost 9090 this is the default ui that prometheus provides here if you go to under status targets here you can see various uh, services that we configured and what are their current status are they up and running are they down so you can get all this information so right now here you can see api gateway is up and we can see this is the api endpoint that is used to scrape the matrix and similarly we can also check the status of other services like catalog service this is the api endpoint that is used to scrape the matrix and you can see when was the last time it scraped and uh, how much time it took so you can see all these details and now if you go to uh, this configuration you can see what is the final uh, configuration that is applied to start our Prometheus server? So this is where we can see all the information like uh, we have a bookstore web app configuration, API gateway configuration. So whatever we specified there and then it also shows what are the default um, configuration that it applied. So effectively this is kind of a effective configuration. Okay. And next thing is uh, if you go to graph. So here. If you select this enable autocomplete and all these things now you will be able to see various metrics for example we want to see if you press control space it will show what are all the possible metrics that are available that you can uh, take a look at it so let us see some jvm related metrics so here uh, let us go ahead and see uh, jvm threads live threads 
okay now if you click on execute it will show the same uh, metric is available for uh, different instances so we have registered all these different instances right so what you can do you can even narrow it down to uh, let's say job equals to catalog service so then you can execute and you can see only that particular metric information and then what is the current value here so that way if you want to uh, uh, inspect only certain metric value you can use this prometheus uh, simple ui and you can uh, fetch the information also you can uh, see it as a graph as well so here for example here uh, you don't want to see only for uh, catalog service you want to see it for all the other service so you can see all this information as well okay but this is kind of a very simpler uh, ui that you can use to just test out uh, various things uh, various metric values and then but uh, we are going to see how we can use grafana for uh, plotting all these metrics in a much more appealing way okay but this is how you can uh, publish the metrics from your application to prometheus basically prometheus is scraping the metrics it is not the other way around okay so uh, so this is how we can publish the metrics next we are going to take a look at how we can send the logs to a centralized log server in our case we are going to use loki which is again provided by the same company uh, usually it is a uh, kind of a popular uh, stack like uh, you can use grafana prometheus loki and tempo so we are going to see next how we can publish our logs to a centralized loki instance now let us see how we can push our application logs into a centralized uh, log server like uh, Loki. So here there are many ways we can achieve this one. Uh, one of the way is you can use Loki uh, logback appender here. So there is a uh, module called Loki Loki for J logback. So which is an appender uh, where you can directly configure your application logs to push to the Loki server directly. So by using this appender, this is one way and another way is uh, you can use a tool called uh, Promptail where you can configure to uh, fetch all the logs from the Docker containers and then um, pull all those log statements and push them to uh, Loki server. So how we can uh, do that? So we can configure in such a way that uh, by by default your container logs will be stored in a centralized location and you can uh, mount your docker socket like this and then you can configure your uh, prompt tail configuration let's take a look at how uh, this configuration looks like so here we have prompt tail docker config so what we are doing so here is the uh, job that we defined where we are hosting we are specifying the host is our uh, unix docker socket here and then we are saying for every five seconds and uh, find the docker containers which has this label so the label is logging equals to prompt tail so it is not going to uh, load all the logs from all the containers only from the containers that has this label attached logging equals to prompt tail this way you can only narrow it down to only okay bookstore related uh, services logs only we want to pull so uh, with this configuration and then uh, it is specified clients equals to like a url this is the url where it is going to use to push the uh, log statements to so this name loki is nothing but what we gave here for the container name so we have defined the prompt tail and we have mounted the uh, custom configuration file into this location and then we are specifying the config file to this location so effectively it is using this configuration file to scrape the uh, logs log uh, statements from the containers and then we have loki uh, component defined here and this is the default uh, local configuration and we are using it we don't have any of our custom loki configuration here which is already available in the loki uh, docker container we are using that same and we are exposing this uh, port number uh, 3100 okay and after defining this both prompt tail and loki 
we also define grafana where we can uh, go ahead and uh, check the logs so logs not only logs we can also explore the prometheus metrics also so we have defined the grafana uh, container and then we have export uh, exposed the port 3000 uh, on the host as well and we have configured what are the default admin credentials and we don't want to um, change the password things like that so with this configuration we are able to restart all our monitoring related containers but before doing that one thing we need to do is here as i mentioned we configured prompt tail in such a way that it only pulls the log statements from the container which has label logging equals to prompt tail so what uh, we need to do in our apps.taml file where we defined all our microservices I have added labels logging equals to prompt tail. So for all the services, I have added labels logging equals to prompt tail. So I have for all the services, microservices, I have added this. I have not added this to our infra services because I don't want to uh, uh, pull the logs for uh, this databases RabbitMQ. I want to only pull the uh, logs from our microservices only. And again, this is one of the approach. This is not the best approach or this is not the only approach. As I already mentioned, uh, you can also uh, follow this approach where you can use a log, uh, low key logback appender and then configure uh, this appender. And you should be able to directly push from your application to uh, low key. All the messages, uh, log statements, you can directly push it to uh, low key and which approach is better it all depends and um, usually if you want to go down with this path of uh, using loki appender usually you can configure your uh, your logback spring dot uh, xml file in such a way that only if the uh, profile is docker profile is activated then only use uh, loki appender otherwise use default uh, console appender something like that you can configure okay uh, usually during the development you don't want to directly push the uh, statements to the loki server so you might want to have conditionally enable this loki appender or not okay but in this way we don't have to have anything related to loki uh, because we are directly uh, scraping the log statements from uh, docker container logs and then push it to loki so during the development you don't even aware of uh, there is a loki thing and uh, you just run it as a, a default console based logs okay so with this configuration uh, we can see uh, earlier we have configured prometheus and then now we have configured prompt tail loki and grafana with this what i have done i have restarted uh, monitoring containers and also i have rebuilt and restarted all the services by running task restart by uh, task restart monitoring and all the containers are uh, restarted now here you can see all the services are running prompt tail and prometheus and also you can see uh, low key is running grafana is running so everything is running in addition to that i have added a couple of log statements uh, in our application like uh, in catalog service i have just added a couple of uh, log statements in our controller so before uh, fetching uh, i have added a log statement fetching product for code so and so and for fetching products for the page so that we can see these statements in our uh, Loki uh, centralized log, sy uh, log system okay so now that we have this and let us go ahead to 3000 which is a grafana uh, system here and first thing what we need to do is we need to add uh, data sources so first let us add prometheus and one thing to remember while uh, giving this url paths here our uh, grafana is running inside uh, docker and also prometheus loki and everything is running inside uh, docker so here you need to give a host name with the container name like uh, so here container name is loki so for uh, grafana it is going to resolve uh, when you say host name loki it knows that this is the container of loki okay so that is why while giving the prometheus uh, 
URL here I am giving Prometheus which is nothing but container name for Prometheus container okay 1990 this is where the port is running okay and that's it uh, if click on save and test so if you see this that means it is successfully configured now let us go back to adding another connection to Loki so in Loki again we are going to add a new source and we give the name Loki and again uh, this is going to be Loki 3100 so if you go to Loki this is running on port 3100 so that is what we have given here and that's it save and test so it is also added successfully now that we have these two if we go to uh, explore and go to Loki now you can see container and service name uh, options here now let us go and pick this container option and we can see catalog service and here uh, let us select last 15 minutes and by default it is not going to refresh automatically but let us select 5 seconds to refresh so here you can see all the logs already now let us go to our web application and right now it is going to make this uh, fetching products for page one now if i go to next page it should print uh, page two so like this okay so this way we can uh, we can see uh, it is uh, similarly if we directly access localhost um, 8989 so let's say through api gateway let us go and access catalog api products slash p100 okay so we should be able to see that log statement fetching by some code so here we can see fetching product for code this one so this is how we can uh, not only catalog service if you go to let's say bookstore web app okay let's run this okay so here if you go to home page it should see uh, fetching products for page one yeah so it is coming from bookstore web app okay so i have added this log statement so that we can check this so this way we can uh, centralized sending all the logs to a central uh, log server like loki and there is there are alternatives like uh, elk stack something like that so uh, but we are using some of the uh, products from the same company grafana so it is a common practice to use all the uh, components from the same uh, provider so that it will be uh, much easier to glue things together so this is how we can send all the logs to uh, loki so next let us take a look at how we can uh, send the metrics to a component called tempo okay next we are going to implement tracing for our applications and uh, there are some out of the box support for open telemetry or open zipkin brave and uh, you can use the backend uh, whichever is compatible with open telemetry so here we are going to use uh, tempo which is again coming from the same uh, grafana uh, company behind the scenes they have a suite of products so we are going to use tempo which is going to store our application traces so how we are going to configure our application to store the traces so we are going to add these two additional dependency one is this micrometer tracing bridge hotel so basically uh, again uh, as we know micrometer is going to take care of uh, uh, sending the metrics to wide variety of uh, backend stores like prometheus and uh, other stores right so in the similar way micrometer tracing bridge is going to act as a facade and you can plug it into a different uh, kind of a exporters so here we are using open telemetry exporter zipkin okay so using this configuration we should be able to publish the uh, metric uh, sorry uh, traces to the back end uh, which in our case is tempo okay so i am going to add these uh, two dependencies for all the services and then we need to configure certain properties about how uh, how many traces we want to publish things like that let's check in our catalog service 
and I have um, a section where I already configured these two things. Uh, earlier we have uh, git information to publish full or uh, simple and also we have been publishing uh, enabling access to all the actual trend points and these are the three additional things that I have added. So here uh, we want to uh, include application name as a tag for all the metrics and for traces by default in our default application at properties I am setting it to false enabled false so when you are running it locally you don't need uh, tracing so I am by default disabling it and also I am configuring if it is enabled we want to sample send all the samples by default it only sends 10% of uh, traces but uh, we want to send all the traces so we are saying probability equals to 1.0 which is going to send all the traces so this is the common configuration i have uh, added these two additional dependencies and this common configuration for all our uh, microservices okay and this is the configuration we need from the application point of view. Now let us take a look at what configuration we need from the Docker uh, Compose point of view. So here I have added this tempo and I have specified this configuration file and I am mounting that configuration file from this tempo directory. So here if you take a look at we are specifying which is the HTTP reason port which is 3200 and I have also mentioned what kind of receivers we are going to support. We have OTLP and Zipkin also we are going to use Zipkin and uh, this is the common configuration uh, we can get it from the official uh, tempo documentation and going through these uh, details is out of the scope for us. So the key part is uh, what is the HTTP listen port we have and what are the receivers uh, we are supporting with this configuration. So with this we have uh, also mapped the ports um, Zipkin port 9411 and Tempo port 3200. We have uh, mapped these ports and now finally when we are running the application in Docker Compose then we are going to enable this tracing. So we have added uh, additional configuration here. So let us add uh, enabled equals to true to set. Okay. So here we have set. Uh, basically we can change these values dynamically by uppercasing all of them and then replacing dots with underscore. Right. So we have done that. So we are enabling this. Uh, when you are running in docker and also we are setting the endpoint where uh, we should publish our traces so we are publishing this to tempo and uh, zipkin port so here if you take a look at this um, we are publishing through zipkin uh, port here on tempo host so that is what we have configured okay so now uh, with this configuration we should be able to restart all of our uh, containers and then uh, let us see how we can capture the traces but before that there is one thing that we need to update uh, earlier when we are using rest client to communicate with the other microservices we have configured in a uh, different way for example in our uh, bookstore web app we have this configuration where uh, we have clients config and here we are creating a rest client uh, like this but if you are creating rest client like this the automatic instrumentation of uh, these observations is not going to work so what we can do instead of this we can auto wire rest client builder rest client dot builder okay so let's call it as builder and we can use that to specify builder dot um, base url dot build okay so this way this is already instrumented uh, to hook up with observability registry so we can simply uh, use this and then continue building our rest client okay so let us do the same thing for this one as well But if you uh, create this REST client just like the way earlier we did uh, creating new REST client or something like that, 
uh, it's not going to instrument out of the box okay and also if you are using rest template the same uh, thing happen like uh, you should inject rest template builder and then use that so that automatic uh, automatic instrumentation just works out of the box so this is one place another one is uh, in our order service we are talking to catalog service right so let us update that as well uh, here if we go to catalog service config again we are uh, creating this by ourselves so what we can do we can say rest client builder and we can use that builder okay so this way instrumentation for rest client works just out of the box you don't need to or do anything else so this is all the code changes that we need uh, for our uh, tracing to work so now i'm going to restart all the services and then uh, let us see whether we are able to see the traces or not okay i have restarted all the monitoring components now i have also included tempo and also i have restarted all the services as well now if i go to grafana here in the data sources now i want to add a new data source which is of tempo so here i am going to add this tempo which is nothing but tempo 3200 if you remember we have a uh, tempo which is running on port 3200 and then uh, we have our container name as tempo so that's what we are giving here and the port number is 3200 and we want to trace to logs uh, you can select low key here and let us save and test so it is added uh, fine okay now if we go to explore and let us go ahead and place a couple of orders so here if i add a couple of products here and then place an order now order is successfully created now if i go to loki and then uh, try to fetch the order service logs here now i should be able to see uh, the flow that got created uh, that create the order so here uh, order number is on so can be delivered so now let me see where is the order creation logic so created order with so and so right so by default when you add this tracing support you can see in the recent versions they have already by default used this format of trace id hyphen span id so that is already included in the logs so now i am going to copy this uh, trace id and if i go to tempo and place this and search for it here you can see all the flow that went through uh, that is associated with the trace id okay so the flow started with uh, placing uh, order on the bookstore web application and it went through some security filter chains and all and then it go to api gateway and then from there it uh, went to order service so you can see uh, the fl whole flow how it went through and then you can also see it also talk to catalog service for product verification and you can see how much time at each span it took okay so basically this trace id and span id if you are not familiar with let's say you started some process and it uh, performed some action in the same service and then it called uh, some other service and then maybe it called some other service but the whole process is considered as one trace and then within that there will be multiple spans one span can be uh, within the same service controller and another one can be calling to a uh, another uh, service method or it can be uh, talking to another service so each of them is considered as a span but all of them carry the same trace id okay so that is what is uh, linking all these logs together so even though each of these contains different spans they all belong to the same trace so that is how uh, in a typical distributed system if something goes wrong this is very crucial to be able to uh, grab all the logs that are associated with one particular user action so this is how we can obtain one of the uh, trace id and then you will be able to see all the uh, associated traces and then you can even see uh, maybe if some customer is 
uh, complaining that some service is slow or something like that. So here you can check which span is taking more time and then you can uh, figure out what is going wrong and all. So this is very uh, valuable here and you can see how much uh, time it is taking for each of them. And then you can even click and go to the specific logs associated with that uh, particular span as well. Okay, so this is very valuable, uh, especially if you are going with the microservices architecture, you should be able to have this centralized monitoring support. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. Okay, so we have seen uh, all this um, low key based uh, log checking and then uh, tempo based uh, tracing and viewing and all these things. So next, uh, we can also create some dashboards and uh, we can configure what are the information we want to monitor uh, but we can also use some of the available uh, dashboards so if you go to dashboards here uh, you can see some pre-built dashboards here let's go ahead and pick one of the dashboard so here i can see spring boot observability the rating is good let us see whether we can use this or not so we can just copy the id and then come here and paste this id and it is going to ask us where is the uh, prometheus uh, data source what is the uh, data source for loki like that and then once you select you can click on import and here it will uh, already show some good uh, monitorings metrics and uh, metrics and uh, you can see how much data it is taking so basically you can pick what are the service uh, you want to see and you can see uh, you can also use different dashboards or you can create your own okay so this is how you can uh, implement various pieces of monitoring support uh, using the grafana stack we have talked about what are some of the actuator features that Spring Boot is providing and then we have looked at how we can implement observability using Grafana stack like Grafana, Prometheus, Loki and Tempo. So I hope this gives you fair enough understanding of how you can uh, implement monitoring for your own applications but in a real world maybe uh, different organizations use different tools for monitoring like uh, some companies use uh, commercial tools some companies use open source tools but the concepts remains uh, kind of a similar okay so thanks for watching bye bye